so hello and welcome to welcome back so what we what we will discuss in this video is essentially the idea of numbers and number systems although uh, well of course they go together so we have to discuss both of them together so the idea of numbers and number systems now what essentially a number is it is essentially some sort of um, um, you can think of it's not very easy to define a number exactly because it gets a little bit complicated and meaning that to define a number you would have to do even a PhD to 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 come up with a very good to come up with a, with a good essential definition for a number so we are not going to do that right now but in simple in simple words essentially what a number essentially you can think of a number as uh, a way of explain of, as a way of expressing for example the number of some pebbles that you might have in a bag right <coughs> Suppose that you have essentially a bag over here and inside this bag you have a number of pebbles, right? Now these pebbles, if you were to, if you were to tell somebody how many pebbles you have in this bag, you want to express the number of those pebbles. And so of course you would use counting in order to come up with the number of the number of those pebbles, right? So then you would you would start counting one two three four five six seven eight and nine, and you have you have nine pebbles in this in this bag, and then you would you would use the numeral nine, in order to tell another person or in order to, in, a, in order to let them know that you have nine pebbles in this bag and that you got by the by means of counting, right? So this number is. Essentially, this this character that I used here is a token, essentially, or a character that is used in some number system. And the number system that we use, that, that essentially that humans use, is called essentially human use among themselves. Not not for example, not used for computers or computer circuits and things like that, but just the number system that humans use in communication in human communication is called the decimal number system it is called the decimal number system and the decimal number system is a base 10 number system is a base 10 number system Meaning that what 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 it means to say essentially what does it mean to say that it's a base ten or decimal number system? What it means is that essentially for in a number like for example four thousand seven hundred eighty five for example it's a number that 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 humans use among themselves, and of course this number is assuming that it's a decimal decimal number. Then you have these different place values in the number you already might know about the ones place value there but we will discuss that shortly you might know about the, the ones place value the tens place value the hundreds place value and the thousands place value and in each place value you can use any of the digits zero one two three four five six seven eight and nine right you can use any of these digits so if you count the number of these digits you go from one to nine which is nine digits of course and then you have the zero itself as well which means that you have in total essentially you have ten digits right so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten the number of digits would be ten so the and then each each and every one of these digits could be used in any of these place values um, um, 
so so then essentially the number system is called a base 10 number system and of course there is there is there is other reasons why you might call this number a number system because essentially over here you have the ones place value then you have the you have the tens place value then you have over here the hundreds place value then over here you have the thousands place value right so so one times essentially you can see that one times ten is a ten ten times a hundred is a ten times a ten is a hundred hundred times a ten is a thousand and so on and so forth and then the, you can of course keep going with these place values and then you will of course never come to an end of course right so you can see that essentially this place value if you multiply it by 10 you will get to the va to the value of the next place value this place value if you multiply it by 10 you will get to the you will get to the value of the next place value and so on and so forth that's another reason why you might call this number system a base 10 number system okay now um now the only thing that that essentially the only thing that need that that, that need, needs to be understood here is essentially how we essentially how this number system works right meaning that essentially based on what rules and regulations is that are numbers in this number system constructed meaning based on what do i know that i have to put a four over here to put a 7 over here, to put an 8 over here, or put a 5 over here. Or suppose that, for example, over here, I know that, let's say that I count, essentially, the number of pebbles in, in, in the bag, and I know that there is 567 pebbles in the bag. 567. So in the number, there is supposed to be a 5, there is supposed to be a 6, and there is supposed to be a 7. So then essentially what happens is that i could write the number as five six seven or seven six five or or six seven five or i don't know seven five six or and there is a whole bunch of ways to write the number right or i could even i could even essentially use for example a decimal point for example in the number you might know about the decimal point for example 21.5 it is a decimal number i might even use a decimal number 67.5 or 76.5 or something like that now based on which based on what do i know that i'm not supposed to use a decimal point or based on what do i know that i have to put the for example, I have to put the digits in what order in the in the number so that so that essentially the correct idea is conveyed to the to the other person and so on and so forth. To answer essentially all of these questions, we need to uh, we need to know how the decimal number system essentially the basic structure of the best of the decimal number system. Now, in order to understand the basic structure of the decimal number system essentially you can use the same idea of pebbles that that we that we used before so let's say that you have a bunch of pebbles essentially in a in a bag something like a large number of pebbles like as large as you want essentially as because this idea we have to essentially keep extending it so let's say a large number of pebbles let's say 1000 2000 3000 4 5 6 7 8 10000 20000 something like that right some large number of pebbles now you want to count you want to count these pebbles right and counting essentially one way to count the pebbles would be essentially start counting one and put it aside two put it aside in another bag three put it aside in another bag and so on and so forth right so that's um, and well of course um, and if you keep doing the same thing um, 
uh, of course somewhere in the in the middle you have to for example you have to go all the way up to i don't know a 50 or a hundred and then you have to start over because essentially in the middle you might make mistakes in counting and then you have to start over now if you go all the way up to for example to a 10 then it's not i mean making mistakes would not be essentially a big problem because it's just 10 pebbles you you, you count 10 pebbles at a time put them aside and then count another 10 pebbles and so on and so forth and then in the end essentially what happens is that you could you could basically um now suppose that you have like for example 50 such bags each containing 10 pebbles so then you would have essentially you could multiply and then the total number of pebbles would be a 500 right so we so we, we take the same idea essentially the pebbles we put them in bags of 10 for example in bags of 10 so i have i have basically one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten pebbles over here i put it in one bag that becomes essentially one group or one bag of ten pebbles and another one essentially one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and put it over here in a bag and then i have another bag of ten so these are bags of ten and you can keep doing the same thing right now assuming that essentially you keep doing the same the exact same thing with all of your pebbles meaning that you you keep doing the same thing essentially put 10 pebbles in a bag and put the bag aside again put 10 pebbles in a bag and put the bag aside and so on and so forth until you get to the to the to to to, to un, until there is no no more pebbles to count right now it's possible that the number of pebbles that you have is they they don't they cannot be put in bags of 10 evenly meaning that for example you might have some change left over for example let's say you have four pebbles left essentially in the end of the process and then of course four pebbles you cannot put it in a bag of 10 so you have to keep them aside right so i put these four four pebbles in 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 smaller bags so i make up essentially some bag for only one pebble and put them in bags of one right so i have now essentially a, a, a large number of these uh, 10 pebble bags and i have four of these bags essentially that each of which containing only one pebble right now uh what happens is that uh, of course um uh, i mean wh what i what i still could do is that is that put essentially each 10 of these bags essentially these bags of 10 each 10 of these bags i can put in one larger bag so suppose that there is a bag that that can contain essentially 10 of these bags of 10 meaning one bag of 10 2 3 4 5 10 of these i put together in a bag it becomes 10 times 10 which is 100 pebbles so now i have basically um i have these bags of I have essentially these bags of uh, 100 which I'm going to do which I'm going to organize this way so let's say that I have this bag of 100 so I let's say that I have 10 of these bags so one bag two three four five six seven eight nine and ten put them all in one bag and so that would be essentially 10 of these bags each containing 10 pebbles which is a bag of 100 basically right so these are bags of 100 and you keep doing the same thing um you keep doing the same thing until you are essentially all the bags that you have are essentially there is no more bag essentially there is no bags left
all of the bags of 10 are organized in this manner right now of course it's possible that for example there is two three bags of 10 left that you cannot put together in essentially in these bags of 100 you have to have essentially 10 of these bags right so less than 10 you cannot less than 10 you cannot put in these bags so let's say that there is a few of these left as well right but then as many as you can put you put together you put in in bags of 100 basically right so and then you can keep doing the same the same essentially the same thing that we did here you can do it over here meaning these bags of 100 we can put them together essentially we can put 10 of them together and make a bag of 1000 basically so i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 3 6 and 9 and 10 i put them together in this bag each of these is a is a bag of 100 so i have 100 times a 10 which is equal to 1000 so this is a bag of 1000 right and then of course um 10 of these bags of 1,000 would be a bag of 10,000, right? 10 of these bags of 10,000 would be a bag of 100,000. And you can keep going with this idea, right? So in the end of the, in the end of the count, in the end of essentially this process, uh, meaning the end of the process would be essentially you, there is, there is no bag left that can be grouped together. You have all the grouping that can be done you have already done right in the end of this process you have a number of these essentially these bags meaning bag of one bag of ten bag of hundred bag of a uh, thousand bag of a ten thousand bag of a hundred thousand and so on and so forth right so let's say that in the end of the process i have let's say that over here we had four of these bags 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 of one right so i have four times one bag of one which is equal to four right so i have four of these bags of one let's say that i have five of these bags of ten let's say that i have for example three of these bags of a hundred Let's say that I have, for example, two of these bags of uh, thousand. Let's say that I have four of these bags of ten thousand, and that's that's all the bags that I that I managed essentially that I counted, right? So now what I could do is that I could use the same idea of place values, meaning that I create essentially i will define these place values like this so this i call this for example the ones place value i call this for example the tens place value i call this the hundreds place value i call this the thousands place value and i call this the ten thousands place value right so i just simply arrange them in this manner right so these are essentially these are the place values that we have these over here are the place values that we have so this is one ten hundred thousand and ten thousand and then i know that basically i know that in the in the ones place meaning that uh, these bags of one i had four of them meaning that the same four I can use in the ones place value signifying that signifying that there is four of these bags of one which means that essentially there is four pebbles over here right these bags of 10 as we counted we had five of them so I put a five over here in the tens place value signifying that there is five of these bags of 10 which means that five times 10 which is equal to 50 which means that i have 50 pebbles over there right so so far i have 50 pebbles plus four pebbles which means that i have 54 pebbles then uh, these bags of 100 i had i i counted three of them 
So I put the theory over here, meaning that essentially there is three of these bags of hundred essentially. Three times a hundred would be a three hundred. So again, three hundred is added to the value of the number. And then by the same logic, I can put a essentially a, a two over here in the thousands place value. And I can put a four over here in the ten thousands place value. And that's how I know how to essentially write my number. So in this manner, meaning that essentially the order in which the digits are written are um, are are essentially are based on this agreement that this is the ones place value, this is the tens place value, this is the hundreds place value, and so on and so forth. And based on the counting that I did, I know essentially where to put each digit right and of course as we mentioned before in this number system essentially what we can do is that what we what we are uh, essentially what we are going to do is that um, we have all of these digits 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 Essentially, any one of these digits can be in any of these place values, right? So, each of these digits, just as a digit, just as a digit is not a number, of course, right? Meaning that if I write a 9 over here as a number, it would, of course, be a number. There is no problem with that. But if I write this nine and specify that, that specify this just as a digit, it doesn't mean anything, right? But then the digit, when it goes into some place value, it 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 then essentially conveys some meaning, meaning that, for example, the four over here that, you, that the four over here specifies essentially four pebbles. But if the same 4, you put it over here, it would specify 4 times 100, which is 400 pebbles, right? Or essentially the 2 over here, if you use that in the 1's place value, that would mean essentially only 2 pebbles. But over here, it means 2,000 pebbles, because it's in the 1,000's place value, and so on and so forth, right? So that's, um, that's essentially how the decimal number system works and so essentially the, the the meaning of this the meaning of the of the number that i have written over here which is 42,350 if you essentially if you take into consideration the concept of place values that means that you have essentially 4 over here and one more thing that, that essentially that is important here is the fact that um, is the fact that 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 the that this one over here is nothing but ten raised to the power zero. Any number raised to the power zero is equal to one, right? Which becomes a one. Then this ten can be written as ten raised to the power one, ten raised to the power two, ten raised to the power three. 10 raised to the power 4, right? So 10 raised to the power 2 is 100, 10 raised to the power 3 is 1,000, 10 raised to the power 4 is 10,000. And you can see that essentially 10 raised to the power 0, which is a 1, if you multiply it by a 10, it becomes a 10, right? 10, or essentially 10 raised to the power 1. 10 raised to the power 1, if you multiply it by a 10, you will get to 10 raised to the power 2, or 100, essentially. 10 raised to the power 2, if you multiply it by a 10, you would get to 10 raised to the power 3, which is nothing but a 1,000. And again, over here, if you multiply 10 raised to the power 3 by a 10, you will get 10 raised to the power 4, which is a 10,000, right? So that's essentially how the, how the decimal number system essentially works, right? Now, apart from this, there is other number systems. I will talk about them briefly so that the essentially the, the, the concept of a number system becomes um, essentially clear enough to you so that 
then we can essentially keep using them for different purposes now some other number systems that are also popular and used for example in computers in um, for example the, the number system that is used in computers is called <coughs> is called the binary number system and it's a base two number system it's a base two number system meaning that essentially you have all of the different place values but since the base is two then there is only two digits to represent any place value meaning there is only zero and one and so a number in binary for example would be one zero zero one one zero one zero one for example something like this right and uh, so for example and, and then again the same thing happens over shear so in the decimal number system you had the ones place value tens place value hundreds place value or essentially this the first place value would be 10 raised to the power 0 10 raised to the power 1 10 raised to the power 2 10 raised to, and so on and so forth over shear the that the first place value would be 2 raised to the power 0 because the base is 2, right? So 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 3, 2 raised to the power 4, and 2 raised to the power 5. And 2 raised to the power 0 is just a 1. And then 2 raised to the power 1 is a 2, 2 raised to the power 2 is a 4. <clears throat> 2 raised to the power 3 is an 8, 2 raised to the power 4 is a 16, and 2 raised to the power 5 is, 5 is 32. And of course you see that basically 1 times a 2 would be a 2, 2 times a 2 would be a 4, 4 times a 2 is an 8, 8 times a 2 is a 16, and so on and so forth, right? So that's the, that's the, the, that is the binary number system. It's a base two number system. <clears throat> and then there is the there is also the octal number system. Octal number system essentially octal the word octal means eight. So the base over here for this for this number system is an eight. And so you have eight digits to represent any place value in the number system so you have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 0 all the way up to 7 would be 8 digits and so essentially then again you have the place values this place value the first one on the right would be the base is 8 so that would be 8 raised to the power 0 8 raised to the power 1, 8 raised to the power 2, 8 raised to the power 3, 8 raised to the power 4, 8 raised to the power 5. So this is a 1, this is an 8, this is a 64, and so on and so forth. And again, you can see that essentially 1 times an 8 is an 8, 8 times an 8 is a 64, and so on and so forth. That's a base 8 number system. Another number system that is used in some in computing essentially the the binary number system is used in computing but it is used essentially in computer circuitry right it's a, it's used in the computer circuitry meaning the the, the physical circuits that we that we use although this is a long time ago now I'm not really sure what they're doing with the computer circuit essentially now that there is quantum computing and all of those things of course the circuit has all but disappeared because now there is no circuit really there is the there is the idea of uh, essentially there is the idea of um, subatomic particles and all of those things which have nothing to do with circuits that represent zero or one or something like that so in the binary number system essentially what happened was that there was a voltage for example in on the circuit 
either the voltage was 0 volts or it was 5 volts so the essentially the the digit 0 would would be would be assigned to 0 volts and the digit 1 would be assigned to 5 volts in the circuit and then based on the voltage then you could then the computer would understand whether it had to represent a 0 or a 1 and that that way the computer would know what to do right but now the quantum computing and all of those things that have been um, introduced i'm not sure what they're doing but all the way up to even 10 years ago 15 years ago the the, the computer circuit the, the base the, the simple computer circuitry that was that was built was based on the binary number system zeros and ones <clears throat> but then there is the octal number system which is more used in the computer software than in the circuitry because if you want to build a computer circuit based on the base based on on a base 8 number system then the system would be much i mean unnecessarily way too complicated so then uh, then the base 8 number system is used in the software part of a computer right meaning for representing numbers essentially for representing larger numbers you would use a base 8 number system and then there is also the hexadecimal number system there is the hexadecimal number system which is the a base 16 number system in this number system essentially what happens is that this is also used in the comp in computing but then again in the software part of computing for representing large numbers and that sort of thing and then over here again you have the same essentially idea of place values meaning 16 raised to power 0 16 raised to power 1 16 raised to power 2 16 raised to power 3 and so on and so forth these are the place values but then the characters or the digits that are supposed to represent these um, these place values are a little bit different than uh, a little bit different than the than the than all of the systems that we, that we already discussed meaning that for example in the decimal number system you had all the digits essentially 0 1 2 3 all the way up to 9 and then so each essentially 0 1 2 3 and so all the way up to 9 so one digit one digit one digit so one digit could be used in one place value but then the problem with or essentially in the in the in the binary system you had only the digits zero and one so one digit can be used in one place value in octal number system you have zero through seven so again one digit can be used in 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 one place value <coughs> But if you were to do the same thing for the hexadecimal number system, you would have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and then 11, and you have to go all the way up to 15, for example, right? Which means that essentially over here you would have two digits for one place value, so the number would be confused, right? So because, because it's not possible to represent one place value with two digits, what you can do, what they have done, is that instead of using a 10, for example, they have used, uh, they have used an A, right? Instead of a, 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 an 11, they have used a B. And then 12, for example, would be a C, a D, a E, and F, F being essentially 15. So 12, 13, 14, and 15, right? This is 14, this is 13, this is 12, and this is 11 and 10. So you have 0 through 9, and then you have A, B, C, D, E, F. So essentially then a number in the hexadecimal would be 1, for example, 0, A, D, 5, F, for example, 9d for 9d something like this this would be a valid number in hexadecimal right 
and again this is the 16 raised to the power 0 place value 16 raised to the power 1 raised to the power 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so that's essentially how the hexadecimal number system works okay so hopefully this video was helpful and now based on the um, based on essentially the, the knowledge that now we have about of course the essentially the the binary octal and hexadecimal number systems are not the topic of our con of, our, of our conversation in this course we are essentially talking about the decimal number system in this course okay so now based on the knowledge that we have of the decimal number system and the construction and the structure of the number of the decimal number system now we can do different types of operations on decimal numbers namely for example um, rounding them or I don't know um, uh, ascend sorting them in an ascending order sorting them in a descending order and so on and so forth okay so I'll see you in the next video with the next topics thank you